Daniel Levy, president of the U.S. Middle East Project and former Israeli negotiator. Daniel, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I want to start with that reported drone launch in Netanyahu's home. Could this conflict literally be getting closer to Netanyahu's doorstep? Well, it's landed on his doorstep, Hena. I don't think the intention necessarily was uh, an extrajudicial killing of Netanyahu after what we've seen with Nasrallah and uh, Hania and others in the opposite direction. But it sends an important signal, doesn't it? It sends a signal that any talk that Hezbollah, because this came from Lebanon, has been incapacitated, they are done for, that's clearly not only premature, but basically a misreading of that reality. I think any talk that Hamas have finished is equally misguided. It doesn't understand what is the nature of a resistance movement rooted in the objective conditions of a people living without freedom. It also tells us that the missile defense is not going to offer full protection. We've seen that already. We know that there are strains on the Israeli system. We know just how dependent on the US Israel is. We know that there are these competing claims for missile defense, Ukraine, Israel. One of these wars, I would argue, the one Israel is prosecuting would be easier to finish. It also tells us, Hena, that you cannot have 100% security. No one can. And unless yeah. you have a political solution, you're not going to see an end to this. And that's what Netanyahu has avoided and prevented all these years. We know the IDF is continuing its campaign in Gaza against Hamas. There were new strikes in the last 24 hours. According to AP News reports, it left 50 people dead. You made a good point about these terrorist groups not completely being crippled just because their leaders have been killed. How significant is taking out Sinwar when it comes to that specific militant group? You know, not that significant. The martyrology, the mythology that will be created now around Sinwar, because our framing, Henna, I think misses something hugely important. The tag terrorist has been used across time to describe people who are fighting for their freedom. And that doesn't mean that they're not violating international law. That's why Sinwa had a request for an arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court Chief Prosecutor. That's why Netanyahu has the same request for an arrest warrant, because he's committing war crimes. But this idea that you take out the leader and the problem is solved, this is rooted in years of Palestinian dispossession, of occupation, of immiseration, of displacement, and what Israel can achieve on the battlefield, a success here, a setback there, is never going to be a solution. But right now in Gaza, we have what you just described in the north, in Jabalia, in uh, al Alauda Hospital, this mass killing events of civilians, the use of starvation, and the hostages are not going to get out unless there's a deal. Netanyahu had nothing to offer. People said, maybe Simwa gone, we have an off-ramp. Netanyahu slammed that door shut because the deal will have to involve not only the hostages, but Palestinians being held, often without trial, in Israeli prisons. And it's going to have to involve a ceasefire and a withdrawal. And Israel is bedding down for a prolonged military reoccupation, the opposite of a withdrawal. And then it comes back to your country, Hannah. The U.S. Sure. What is the U.S. going to do? Is it going to use that leverage to try and bring this to a closure, or are we going to continue to see a spinning of wheels and a pretense? And, and unfortunately, the Biden administration does get a fail grade on this one. Mm. All right, let's go back to those hostages. We heard from the father of an Israeli hostage. He called Sinwar's assassination an inflection point. You have negotiated with Palestinian leaders under multiple Israeli administrations. Daniel, how could these hostages get home safely if, to your point, a ceasefire deal is not feasible? I think that's why you see this, this desperation, fully understandable to all of us, on the part of those families, because they know the answer is that they can't. Netanyahu, after the uh, killing of Sinwar, turned around and said, if they raise the white flag and give themselves up, then it's done. That doesn't happen. It's like saying if Israel raises the white flag and ends its illegal occupation, unfortunately, it's not going to do that. And so the option is a deal. The deal is on the table. The deal involves a ceasefire. Netanyahu refuses a ceasefire. Simwa's absence may make uh, communication channels difficult for a few days, but it doesn't change the fundamentals.
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.